Hello, my name is Jaylee Peer, and today I will be presenting on Pandemic Paleontology, Teaching Online Using the Digital Atlas of Ancient Life Virtual Collection. Dr. Jonathan Hendricks has been heading up this project over the last several years, and during 2019, he hired me uh, to help with several aspects of the Digital Atlas, some of which I will be sharing with you today. You can find the Digital Atlas at digitalatlasofancientlife.org. We are also on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, regardless, wherever you are, if you see the logo displayed here in the top right of the screen, you found the right place. The goal of the Digital Atlas is to target students, teachers, instructors, and general science enthusiasts, anyone interested in paleontology and the history of life on Earth. Today, I'll be sharing a little bit about the virtual collection of 3D specimen models in the Digital Encyclopedia of Ancient Life, or the DEAL. However, there are several other resources. I encourage you to go on the website, follow along, or check these out on your own time. When we think of traditional teaching collections. Uh, they are very hands-on, they're tangible. Students get to directly interact with specimens. Um, they're awe-inspiring. If you've ever you know, taken a course in paleontology or as a child visited a natural history collection, um, they just have a really amazing impact. Um, they, there are millions of years worth of real once living examples. So it's not a toy, it's not a reconstruction. Uh, you're touching something that was once alive. Um, so together it creates this really unique learning experience. However, there are several limitations, uh, one of which is access. So even if you're taking a course that uses a teaching collection, you're dependent on the professor or the teaching assistant to grant you access outside of class hours. Um, so often they're kept behind locked doors. Um, another is biodiversity. So maybe you're limited on the geographic area where your teaching collection is, um, and therefore you haven't been able to fill in gaps taxonomically or geographically um, for your collection. Uh, specimens in teaching collections are generally well loved for several decades um, and then over time you know things get broken um, and they degrade in quality over time. Uh, storage space is another limitation if you have a really great teaching collection they take up space um, and then what we are all experiencing today, uh, transitioning to a virtual teaching environment, is online accessibility. How can we take specimens, especially lab courses, to an online version? So the Digital Atlas is setting out to change all of that. On the right is what a typical teaching collection looks like. And as you can see, each of the drawers represents a different taxonomic group. Um, and this is what we've tried to create uh, with the digital atlas is creating these virtual drawers organized taxonomically. So we have taken specimens in the systematic and research collections um, at the Paleontological Research Institution, as well as specimens on display at the Museum of the Earth. Um, some of these specimens uh, are often behind closed doors outside of the public view. Um, so being able to create 3D models in these virtual drawers um, gives the public or anyone with an interest access to these really awesome specimens. So this is what our web page looks like. You can find the virtual collection here. Each of our 3D models is manipulatable. So what that means, it's as if you were holding this specimen in your hand and you can turn it over and investigate. You can zoom in on distinguishing characteristics, zoom out, um, and it really creates, um, it mimics that in-person experience uh, with these specimens. Additionally, many of our specimens are annotated, so uh, distinctive characteristics and features have been labeled and described, so it just adds another level of interactability with these uh, specimens and creates a different sort of unique virtual learning environment. 
So how do we create 3D models? So this is a process called 3D photogrammetry. Here we use Agisoft PhotoScan software. Um, Emily Hoff is our in-house 3D model expert. For the past several summers, uh, she's spent uh, her time just cranking out hundreds of these 3D models. Um, and I was lucky enough, she imparted her wisdom to me, um, and I've been able to create a few of my own 3D models for the digital atlas. Uh, she's created a really awesome photogrammetry guide. So if you're interested in implementing this at your home institutions, um, you can go to our virtual collection page and look for this photogrammetry guide button and download your own copy, free, accessible for you to use. So when we have the 3D models, we then upload them to a website called Sketchfab. And Sketchfab essentially is an online repository for 3D models. You can find 3D models of just about anything. However, on our digital atlas page on Sketchfab, uh, you can find all of our fossil 3D models um, and they're organized by collection taxonomically. So you can go to our arthropod page or our brachiopod page or bivalve page, et cetera, and look at all of the specimens in uh, each of those virtual drawers. Uh, to date, we have over 500 specimen models uploaded um, and more are always being added. A few things I would like to point out are all of our models are under Creative Commons public domain licensing. So that means they're 100% free and accessible for anyone to use. Uh, you can click on any 3D model and you can download the 3D image files. So if you happen to have access to a 3D printer and you want to print a specimen either for your class or your own research, you can do that. Um, Another few things is there are embed and share links with each of our 3D models. So you can copy the HTML code uh, and embed it as a video file in any of your own websites or assignments. And you can share these wherever you like, um, to social media, with your courses. Uh, this is a resource that we have created um, that we want to be used and you can do with however you see fit. These are a few of our virtual drawers. So as you can see, um, we've generally represented most macro invertebrate groups, as well as a few non-taxonomic groups, such as trace fossils and fossil preservation, which are still essential to learning about paleontology or the history of life on Earth. You can find our digital encyclopedia of ancient life here on our webpage. And what the Digital Encyclopedia is, is an open access free online textbook. So textbooks are expensive, often they're another barrier to learning about paleontology. And uh, in our chapters, um, we've used only open access images and, and copyright free images. So in many cases, we've recreated commonly used figures or taken figures and images from other open access sources. Um, so we have chapters covering most of the major taxonomic groups, as well as conceptual chapters such as the geologic time scale, evolution and the fossil record, paleoecology, systematics, et cetera, uh, really foundational chapters to learning about paleontology. Um, and they are continuously added to and updated, so check back frequently for new additions. A few of the more recent additions include an echinoderm chapter, which I co-wrote with Jansen Smith. Um, Jansen also published a chapter on conservation paleobiology, as well as paleoecology. Liz Hermson also recently published a chapter on leaf structure. Um, and this is part of a larger section on uh, plant development and structure uh, incorporating fossil plants. Um, later this fall, we hope to publish uh, two additional chapters, one on bivalves and one on arthropods, so be on the lookout for those. So during the spring semester, when much of our country and the world was experiencing lockdown um, and there was a rapid transition to online teaching, uh, we experienced an exponential increase in traffic on our web pages. Um, 
and using our resources. But instructors began to reach out to us saying, we love your resources. However, I want to use your 3D models for my exams or my assignments. But as you can see in the image here, each of our 3D models on Sketchfab is associated with its identifying information. Unfortunately, that's not something that we can get rid of unless we want to pay for a very expensive upgraded Sketchfab account. But what we have done to bypass this is Emily came back this summer to create a special collection of test specimens. Um, and if you'd like access to these, you can contact us at Digital Atlas at priweb.org. Fill out a Google form if you are an instructor and we will provide you access to those test specimens. One last quick announcement is this summer PRI has released Earth at Home. So this is something that has just launched. It does include the Digital Encyclopedia of Earth Science, which is the complement to the Digital Encyclopedia of Ancient Life. Um, but we're expanding beyond just fossils and paleontology to include all aspects of earth science. Uh, and this will include 3D models of rocks and minerals. Um, so more is coming soon, but it is something we are very excited to announce. So there are many more people than I have time to individually thank for contributing to this project over the past several years. I would like to thank NSF uh, for their financial support in making this project possible. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Jen Bauer, who made it possible for me to be here uh, and present this presentation to you today. And with that, I would like to thank you. Um, please feel free to reach out to us at digitalatlas at priweb.org um, if you have any questions or concerns. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.